Hey everyone, Skull902 back here for another part of Yoshi's Island. This is part 9, and here in part 9, uh, we're going to be starting World 5, where we're going to get the only three winter-themed levels. Uh, I guess, uh, you know, appropriate enough, uh, since this is the Christmas season, that we're even getting some uh, winter-themed levels, but... Uh, you know, winter's one of my favorite aesthetics. In fact, uh, as far as outdoorsy stuff is concerned, I think winter really is my favorite aesthetic. So it is a bit sad that, uh, you know, th these are the only three levels in the entire game, this and the next two, uh, that, you know, have any semblance of some goddamn snow in it. Uh, also, fuck that Lakitu, uh, much like the one in the uh, castle from last time, but... Uh, Again, uh, the, the Crimbo Chronicles continue, and uh, I, I didn't do the encouragement last time, but uh, I assure you, I always encourage you. Uh, if you have any traditions uh, that you like to partake in or memories that you'd like to share, uh, you know, for the holiday season, it doesn't necessarily have to be Christmas. Uh, you, you, can, you can put them right down in the comments section. I'd be happy to read them. But yes, uh... So, uh, I once again fucking forgot a gaming Christmas memory. Uh, though I, I think this time, uh, just this, this one short mention, uh, can be forgivable considering the, uh, the subject matter. Uh, but in 2006, uh, Mattel returned to, uh, the gaming industry, you know, after being out of it for so long after the Intellivision, uh, got discontinued. Uh, but... They, they really weren't trying with this one. Uh, they released a system called the Hyperscan, which uh, its gimmick was that you basically bought packs of cards uh, to read into the games, and uh, these cards would like give you items in-game and stuff. Uh, it, it sounded like a novel little gimmick. Uh, and, you know, even back then, I, I knew that this fucking thing wasn't even going to be any competition for, like, the 360, uh, or anything. But since I, I, like, I knew that I wasn't going to get, a, a 360 or a Wii for myself that year, so, like, I guess I just felt envious that my brother was getting a console. Uh, you know, my older brother got his 360, that, uh, I asked my mom for a hyperscan, and, um, I feel bad for her. <laughs> Because, like, she she gets the fucking thing, uh, and I barely played it. Uh, but the reason why I barely played it is because, uh, uh, the system sucks ass. Uh, so, it, like, it came with an X-Men game and a few cards to, like, get you started, but, like, this, this fucking system loads games, like, uh, slower than, uh, the PS1. Uh, you know, like, uh, that era of system, uh, which... You know, if you played on a PS1 or a Sega Saturn or anything of the sort, uh, you'd know that, like, those load times can be quite serious. So, uh, it took forever to load. The game wasn't very intriguing or in uh, interesting one bit. The the cards, uh, like, it was really luck of the draw. Uh, you know, I, I didn't mean for that to be a play on words or anything, but it was... Really lucky whether or not uh, your system actually read the goddamn cards. Uh, it was it was a complete and total mess. Uh, I think we still have the thing around somewhere, but the controller's been disassembled. So uh, if we if we tried playing any of the games, uh, or well, we just had the X Men one, but uh, if we tried playing anything on there, uh, like we wouldn't be able to actually do anything on on account of having no controller. Uh, so yeah. Uh, that's the hyperscan, and I think that's the last gaming-related Christmas memory that uh, I I can conjure. Uh, if something else comes up, I'll I'll mention it. Uh, at least something that I didn't already have a, a specific plan for. Uh, anyway, to mention. So next up uh, is uh, some more generalized uh, Christmas traditions uh, that I'd like to talk about. And again, uh, if, if you want to do the same thing for, uh, whatever you do in the holiday season, then you, you know, you're, you're more than welcome, uh, to, to do so. So, uh, yeah, uh, sorry about the, the pause there. Uh, the first thing that I want to bring up, uh, is, uh, something I find really fun. Um, Hopefully I've done a video on this, uh, which I've been wanting to do for years by this point, but, uh, you know, uh, just to mention it in general, and in case I haven't done a video on it, you know, there is a place uh, in uh, uh, southeast Michigan where I live 
uh, called Gross Point, and that's like where all the rich people live, you know. Uh, that, that's them be the fancy areas. And uh, what uh, the, the rich people like to do uh, around uh, around this time of year is uh, around, like all around the city, uh, there are these like really fucking extravagant, beautiful Christmas lights that they set up. You know, every tree is dressed. Uh, you know, they've got like a bunch of displays out there, uh, like, just for example, like, uh, one of them, uh, that I very clearly remember, uh, from back in the day was like, uh, a whole big light set up with Santa and his reindeer. Like, shit was fucking lit. Uh, <laughs> best Christmas decorations I've ever seen. Y y y like, have you ever seen in the movies, uh, or TV or whatever? Uh, where there's like, you know, some bumbling dad and he does his Christmas decorations. He looks over at his neighbor, uh, and his neighbor's got like a much better display, uh, than, than he does. Like, that's, that's what this entire city is. During that time of year, it's just the neighbor that did a much better job than you on the Christmas decorations. <laughs> Uh, but it's it's absolutely fucking beautiful. Uh, I haven't seen it in a long time, and again, hopefully that changes this year. Uh, just for reference, I, I'm recording this in November right now, so hopefully. But, uh, you know, even if I haven't uh, done a video on it uh, and, and gone back, uh, I, I just, I, I want to uh, emphasize just how beautiful the fucking display is. Uh, so, that was the first thing that I wanted to talk about. Uh, and then, uh, next up, uh, just a, a short little one, uh, but, you know, it was, it was a tradition for a few years running. Cookies, you know? Uh, <laughs> that seems to be a, a seminal Christmas snack. And, uh, my little sister was so sweet. Uh, you know, after, uh, she really, uh, got into baking, like, a few years ago, there was a, a couple years in a row there where, uh, she would, uh, bake some cookies, uh, and, uh, my brothers and I would, uh, like, ask her for, uh, specific kinds, uh, and whatnot, and, uh, she, she made all of them, uh, and would, uh, bring them over to our house and whatnot, so, uh, uh, I just want to give a shout out here to my little sister, uh, for, uh, baking those cookies. Uh, they are delicious. So, uh, you know, I guess if there's anything else I can solicit from, uh, from you viewers in the comments, it's, uh, what is your favorite kind of cookie? Uh, I, I would always ask my little sister for, uh, uh chocolate chip and, uh, peanut butter cookies. Uh, those two are, like, my, my hands-on favorite, especially in the, like, you know, soft cookie, homemade sort of style. Uh, like, th them's, them's some good tastes, you know? Uh, also, that was clutch. Uh. But yeah, uh, I, I think it would be safe to assume that uh, cookies is a is a tradition uh, for many people on Christmas. So uh, again, what, what's your favorite kind of cookie? Put put it down in the comments if you uh, if you feel like saying. And then uh, the the last tradition uh, was, you know, did did your parents or uh, anybody like when you were a kid uh, did they allow you to uh, have like you know, an early Christmas gift, or maybe a couple, like, before the holiday itself. Because uh, that was a thing uh, in, in my household, uh, you know, uh, back in the day. Uh, so there's, like, a, a couple of uh, ones that I, I wanted to mention, because, like, early Christmas gifts seem to be, like, almost as exciting <laughs> as, like, uh, getting the, the gifts themselves on, on the day uh, itself. Uh, so... There's a couple of them uh, that I would like to mention. Uh, I uh, told the story before of um, the uh, Christmas trip that uh, I took with uh, my mom to uh, Walmart uh, back in the day, 2004. Uh, and I kind of trolled about uh, what, what games my brothers would have wanted. But, uh, like, while we were there, I got a couple of gifts for myself. The... Uh, theme, I, I guess, of these gifts was, uh, Spider-Man. So, like, uh... I, I got this, like, sweet-ass action figure case that unfortunately didn't last that long. Uh, but it was very nice and fancy. Uh, I, I just didn't take care of it as well. Uh, that was, that was my problem. 
but it was like this uh, action figure case uh, of Spider-Man branded. Uh, they made it look like New York. Uh, it was it was some sick shit. And uh, then, uh, much more memorably, I got uh, Spider-Man 2 on DVD. Uh, that that was like the year that we got our, our first uh, like proper DVD player. Uh, so that was really exciting. Uh, and, uh, I, I, I've loved the shit out of the movie since the first time I saw it. Uh, so, that was, that was a fun early, uh, Christmas gift, uh, to get. You guys, uh, regular viewers know that I'm a fan of wrestling. Uh, I got my first wrestling replica belt, uh, that they, like, try to emulate in the style of, like, the, the real ones that you see on TV the following year. Uh, that was another early Christmas gift that I really treasured. Uh, my mom and my dad split the difference on that one. It was like 300 bucks, so uh, I really appreciated the shit out of that. And then uh, the last one before, uh, like, Christmas gifts just kind of were like, you get them when you get them, uh, at least for me, was in uh, 2009. I had just become a sports fan that year, uh, and my favorite sport uh, is ice hockey. Uh, and that was becoming very evident, like, I was watching a shitload of Red Wings games, uh, Detroit Red Wings, uh, I, I should, uh, be more specific, uh, but, you know, th that's my NHL team, the Detroit Red Wings, uh, so, when I found this, like, sweet-ass, uh, sports shop in my local mall that, uh, sold jerseys in my fat-ass size, uh, and they had a layaway system, too, I was like, Mom, can you, can you please let me, uh, so my mom was like, all right, sure. You, you can get your jersey. Uh, so my first uh, sports jersey, uh, the Detroit Red Wings home sweater, was uh, another uh, early Christmas gift uh, that uh, I believe it took four payments uh, for me to like pay the whole thing off. Uh, but yeah, uh, just a another early Christmas gift that I hold very near and dear. Uh, I found that a lot of these early gifts uh, have uh, a lot to do with, like, uh, my uh, biggest interests, you know, superheroes, professional wrestling, and uh, team sports. So, uh, kind of interesting how that works out, but, uh, you know, uh, that's that's it for, uh, like, Christmas traditions that I can, I can think of at the moment. Uh, let's go on to another episode of Super Mario World. Uh, and th this one that I would like to talk about here today is, uh, Born to Ride. Uh, it's another yoshi focus episode, of course. This one starts out with, uh, Mario and Luigi. Uh, you know, they're doing what they can to, uh, make themselves, like, a, uh, like, uh, a running water system. They want to make a sink. Uh, that's the, the proper terminology. Uh, they, they want to make a sink, and they're doing it with bamboo, but uh, Yoshi comes by, uh, or rather, they notice that the sink isn't working, uh, despite the fact that it should. Uh, they look outside, and it's revealed that Yoshi has eaten the bamboo that they were using as, like, uh, piping uh, to get water from whatever source that they were uh, going after. Mario and Luigi, uh, you know, yell at Yoshi about it, tell him not to bother them when uh, they're, you know, on the job, uh, and Yoshi's like, Oh, you don't want Yoshi around? Fine, I'll, I'll just fuck off then. <laughs> so Yoshi runs away. Uh, they include a very unnecessary scene of Yoshi murdering a, uh, a Wiggler. Uh, I, I understand the Wigglers are bad guys, but, uh, murder bad. Uh, but he just straight up eats the Wiggler. And, uh, you know, he's just kind of pouting to himself about the situation. Uh, until this, uh, biker gang shows up. Uh, and they're called the Dino Riders. Not to be confused with the animated television show or toy line of the same name. But, uh, they, they see Yoshi, uh, and, uh, when, when Yoshi mentions that, uh, his, his beef is with the Mario Bros, uh, they're like, oh shit, you know, uh, King Koopa's got a, a reward going for, uh, the Mario Brothers. Uh, if, if we get them, we, we can get some, some serious, you know, <laughs> dino bucks. So, uh, they're like, oh, hey, Yoshi, do you, do you want to join our social group? <laughs> and, and Yoshi's all for it. Uh, you know, he, he wants to make some new friends after he thinks that Mario and Luigi have, uh, betrayed him. 
Uh, so, they initiate him. And they initiate him uh, by having him, him do, like, graffiti, uh, which he does as a smiley face <laughs> on uh, some caveman's wall. And uh, they also have him throw a babam, which is like a stink babam. Like, th the only time we ever see that variant. Uh, so, you know, uh, Yoshi gets into the gang. Uh, he gets himself a, a jacket and a, and a motorcycle of his own, which is kind of amazing to think. Uh, that, you know, only only so little time has passed since Mario and Luigi invented cars in this, uh, in this world, but we have a motorcycle gang. But Yoshi's in. Or so he thinks, because again, this is kind of a, a trap. Uh, so Yoshi uh, comes back to uh, the Mario Bros. Uh, after, uh, like... Peach uh, is wondering where he is, and, uh, you know, Mario and Luigi just kind of dismiss it. Oh, we scolded him. Uh, and P Peach is kind of, like, uh, not petrified, but she's very disappointed in the Marios over this. She's just like, you scolded him? But he's just a baby. Uh, now, I don't, I don't know what uh, Princess Toadstool's mindset here is. Has she ever seen a baby Yoshi? In Super Mario World, they look like this. Like that, you know, the Yoshi in the show is not one of one of those fucking things, those monstrosities. But uh, Yoshi comes back after all that. Uh, he's like, you know, after Mario and Luigi yelled at me, I, I joined this social group, and and Toadstool's just like, oh, so he won't he won't remember the scolding, eh? But uh, the Dino Riders want to talk to Mario and Luigi, uh, and Yoshi gives them the news, so uh, they set the whole thing up. They go to this, like, biker bar, or whatever, uh, and, uh, Yoshi tells them that, uh, his friends want to talk to, uh, want to talk to them alone. Of course it's a setup, so, uh, the Dino Riders take Mario and Luigi away. Yoshi sees this through the window, and he's like, ah, oh, shit, I fucked up. I, g I gotta talk to the princess. So, uh, he gets the princess on, uh, his motorcycle, they ride through. Uh, they see that uh, the Dino Riders have gone, but follow their tracks, which... What is the, th the fucking deal in Super Mario World with following tracks? Uh, but they follow motorcycle tracks uh, to uh, this, uh, this big open field. You know, Mario and Luigi uh, are there basically begging for their lives at this point. Uh, you know, they ask for their last meal and, and everything like that. Uh, it seems pretty... Uh, pretty bad for them. But Yoshi comes through, rides on his motorcycle, or rather no, he walks up to them uh, and chews the ropes off of them. Uh, to which Mario's like, you know, <laughs> if there's one time that I'm thankful for your, your appetite, it's right now. So uh, he saves uh, Mario and Luigi Hops on his motorcycle with the princess to uh, make an escape and uh, pushes over the the other Dino Riders uh, cycles uh, as well to to make it slower. So there's this uh, chase sequence that goes on, where like a, a couple things that I, I want to mention, aside from the song being ugly because that's just kind of a given for Super Mario World, like the animation in this episode is like really off. Uh, and I think one of the shining examples of that is during the chase sequence they use the wrong fucking background for one of the shots, so it looks really weird. But, you know, another thing about this, uh, is that it, you know, it seems that murder is a, a real theme of this episode, because one of the Dino Riders gets shoved into lava, and we do see him later, so he somehow survives that, but... You, you know those purple blocks, uh, in Super Mario World that you, like, run along so that you can run up the side of walls and shit? Well, there's one of those during this sequence, and much like in the actual game, it has, like, an actual, like, face. It's smiling along and shit. Uh, the good guys use it, uh, and, uh, you know, uh, it, it's all fine, but the bad guys try to use it, and, uh, the, the block gets fucking destroyed. That block is dead. That block had a fucking block family. <laughs> the Dino Riders killed that fucking block. So, uh, rest in peace to, uh, that block. It was a real homie, uh, helping, uh, helping people, uh, <laughs> climb up on walls. But aside from that, 
you know, aside from all the murder going on in this episode, uh, you know, uh, eventually our heroes make their escape. And at the very end, when they get to um, the, the warp pipe they need to go to, uh, Yoshi's sad about giving up his motorcycle. Uh, and the princess is like, well, sorry, Yoshi, but it won't fit. Uh, and so Yoshi has to has to say goodbye to it. Uh, unless, of course, uh, the princess says that uh, he wants to stay in the gang. Uh, to which Yoshi responds with, like, my favorite line in the episode. Uh, Yoshi, no gangsta. Uh, he, he sheds the jacket. Abandons the motorcycle, uh, and our heroes uh, make it through the uh, the warp pipe all safe and sound. The Dino Riders come up, uh, and uh, they look inside and they're like, "Ah, shit! No, we, we lost our reward. Fuck! That Yoshi sword, that wimpy Yoshi sword, got the best of us." So you know that's fun. Uh, at the very end. Like Mario and Luigi are, are working on their uh, on their plumbing again, and they're just about to test it out uh, when they see uh, Yoshi come by, uh, chomping on a piece of bamboo, which is what they were using for uh, the pipes uh, and whatnot. Uh, so uh, Mario, who's promised not to yell at Yoshi again after uh, being saved by him, uh, is like, "Oh no, Yoshi! I wish that you wouldn't." And then Yoshi's like, "Ha!" Huh, Fucking got you guys, <laughs> you plumber idiots. Okay, so maybe he wasn't that rude about it. Um, but uh, you know, he's like, "Nah, it was it was just a joke, fam. Uh, try it." So uh, they they try it. The sink works, uh, and, and everything uh, is all well and good uh, in the you know Mario household. So uh, yeah. That's, uh, th that's the end of the episode. Uh, I, I find it real fun. You know, you know, like, honestly, if I didn't find an episode of Super Mario World or, like, any of those Deke Mario cartoons fun, uh, that, that'd be a, that would be a sad day. I don't think I've been bored by a single one, but just to assure you all, I, I, I liked it. Uh... Though, once again, like, uh, the animation looks really fucking weird on that one, um... I think it's one of the weakest uh, in that department. Like, I guess I already mentioned it about the uh, the the background uh, thing that they got the uh, background wrong in the chase sequence. But like, uh, one of the other things I guess I could mention was that uh, during the scene where uh, Mario and Luigi are talking to the princess about like their uh, conversation with Yoshi at the beginning. The, the proportions, especially on the princess, uh, looked so fucking wrong. So I, I guess that, you know, it's an episode that they uh, just kind of felt like shoving out there uh, in, you know, not not too long of a time. You compare that with, like, how, how well everything looks in the opening, and I, I know that's a bit of an unfair comparison, because, you know, back then they would put so much more money into the opening sequence. Uh, but, you know, it, it is still kind of telling. You know, just how different uh, the the two sequences are. So, uh, yeah. Born to Ride, though, you know, it's it's an entertaining episode. Uh, much like, uh, you know, uh, any of the others. If, you know, at, at least if you're someone like me who uh, really likes uh, stupid, stupid, stupid cartoons. So, yeah. That's basically my opinion on it. I didn't think that I would uh, have this long to go before... Uh, talking about the boss, but uh, there is one thing that I'm not sure if I mentioned when I uh, talked originally about um, throwing eggs, uh, and we have seen it a couple times since, including in this level, so uh, I, I guess I can mention that now, is uh, that like when you're throwing eggs, uh, you can specifically aim your shot. Uh, so, you know, you, you don't have to rely on uh, the cursor going up and down and hoping that you get lucky if, uh, if you feel like you can make a, a certain shot. You can uh, basically pause the cursor by uh, tapping the R button. So, you know, it'll go into place, and if you want the cursor to uh, start moving again, you just tap R again. Uh, but for certain instances, uh, I find that uh, very helpful. So, you know, uh, if, uh, if you want to be a little more precise uh, with, uh, 
your egg throws, then uh, there you go, right then and there. Uh, you just you just you just press R uh, to to aim your shot. So uh, yeah. All right. <laughs> and en enough of that stalling. Here's the boss. Uh, so we're just gonna run along here and oh hey look it's one of those uh, slime motherfuckers but you know much like last time uh, Kamek's gonna come in here and uh, you know it's, it's basically like most boss fights in this game come to think of it I didn't really think of that as a theme but uh, he comes in uh, and uh, makes it grow giant so uh, this here is uh, Sluggy the Unshaven ugly bastard uh, <laughs> Uh, but he's taking up most of this hallway, and he's uh, crawling toward you. Uh, now, there's no way to uh, directly uh, hurt him. Uh, at least, like, uh, just with normal egg throws. So you, you, you gotta uh, push his, like, squishy body in so that you can get to his heart, and that will uh, directly hurt him. Uh, it's not that hard, really, uh, to uh, get the shots that you need, but I'm also an idiot, uh, so... <laughs> You know, sometimes my aim is off, but, uh, you know, basically, just, uh, try to aim, uh, at the most, uh, indented part of him as possible, uh, you know, and, uh, you should be able to get the job done, uh, pretty quick, uh, you know, quicker than me, because, again, I'm an idiot. One fun thing about this boss is that Nintendo Power's guides apparently said that this, this guy means no harm, so we, we literally just killed an innocent enemy. Uh, if that's even a thing that can exist. Uh, just made him have a heart attack and, and melt down into nothing, but, uh... Eh, you know, 69, nice, again. Uh, he was kind of disgusting, so I guess he deserved it. So, yeah, uh, that's Sluggy the Unshaven, and, uh, this has been Part 9. I'll see you guys in the next one. I've been Skull902, thank you for watching, and have yourselves a wonderful day.